Hi, my name is Neo Khwashi. I was born in Johannesburg and raised in Pretoria. I'm the last born of two siblings and I'm still blessed to have both parents who are alive. Um, Neo is a very passionate young person who's always looking forward to learning new things, very passionate about the entertainment industry, be it music, um, fashion, um, film is actually what I went into and still developing in that part of my career. Um, but that fell a little bit behind uh, the, with the schedule that I would have loved it to go at because I fell sick in the process of getting my um, degree. But yeah, life turned out, or well, is turning out to be fine now that everything is falling back into place. Um, I was a very active child and participated in sports at school as well as um, cultural stuff like your drama, your poetry, all those stuff. Um, and that's how I actually developed a passion for um, film. Um, so in 2016, um, life was fine until July where I fell sick out of the blue. Literally, I woke up in the morning and I had a swollen eye. Um, it didn't really bother me that much because during the day it would go down and go back to normal. Um, and then two weeks later, it started developing in the other eye where both eyes were like swollen. And I also developed a really bad rash on my face that was very itchy. Um, and it spread onto my hands as well because I think I was scratching so eventually it spread onto my arms, um, onto my hands. So uh, just as um, I was trying to figure out what it was, I went to my uh, optometrist because I wear spectacles so I didn't think it was such a major thing. And then I got transferred to an uh, eye specialist um, who then diagnosed me with uh, allergies. So I was put on treatment for three months, but nothing was getting better. Um, I kept getting worse and the rash continued to spread as well onto my skin. It was a very itchy rash. So as soon as you start scratching, you never stop. And once you stop, that's when you realize that you've scratched so much that you are even bleeding, you know. So uh, I then uh, went to a dermatologist and as well, the doctor diagnosed me with allergies um, and I was allergic, apparently I was allergic to uh, pollen and dust. But funny enough, it was winter time, you know, and in, during winter there's no pollen. So I just, it was always a question in my head or how can it be pollen, you know. But then um, I didn't really mind it, but uh, got to a point where the rash had spread onto my chest and onto my back and the swelling in my face still kept getting worse. But I just kept going on with life, you know, going to school because I was really determined to finish my degree. I was doing my second year that, yeah, in 2016 I was doing my second year and I was pushing through to just get done with school, you know. And then um, things started uh, spiraling out of control really were around September where I felt a bit fatigued in my body and I didn't know really what was the problem you know so I thought I was gaining weight because I was really swelling all over my body um, so I, I joined the gym and I thought yeah okay let me start a diet and things will turn out to be fine eventually but um, I still didn't get any better and I was still on treatment but the stuff didn't work at all you know and I kept going back to the doctor from this doctor to that doctor and I just kept being juggled around so many doctors of them trying to figure out what's happening with me. Um, it got to a point where I began to be weak, very, very weak in my body. Um, I couldn't stand from a chair. Um, I couldn't lift myself out of the bathtub. You know, sometimes I'd sit in the bathtub for like 20 minutes trying to get out of the bathtub, um, just trying to gain my energy to move around, you know. Um, but I still continued 
living life the way I would have loved to, you know, going to school, um, going to the mall, despite how I looked, because it was not really a nice image to look at. Um, I think the people that were around me noticed that uh, there's something wrong with you, but, you know, I didn't have answers myself, so I didn't know what to say. I just kept saying I have allergies, you know, and it would be brushed off. Um, uh, there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was one morning, however, um, when things really got bad. Um, I was stuck in bed. I literally could not get out of bed because of the amount of pain that I felt in my body. Like your, my joints, my everything, literally from the head to my toes. I was in pain. I was, I, I couldn't move. I, I just, I just laid there. You know, and um, at that point, I was actually not living at home. So I had to call home and say, um, this is what's happening. And they've been there for me, like ever since it started, like, and they've been seeing how bad it's been playing out. Um, but that specific morning, um, I was rushed to the hospital, um, went to the ER and I was just left there for like a good two hours before a doctor actually came to check up on me. Um, I drank Panados, I drank whatever pain medication that they gave me, but I was still in so much pain and they couldn't figure out what was going on. And together with the weakness in my body, I couldn't walk, I couldn't move, I couldn't literally do anything for myself. Um, they did blood tests and like nothing actually came up. And I remember one doctor um, that was treating me the first um, 30 minutes was, was telling me that, no, it's a Friday and I've got the right to go and pick up my son, so I'm gonna leave you. And whoever's coming um, next after me, the next doctor who's on call will see what they do with you. But as for me, I'm done. And to me, I'm thinking, okay, like, you can see the condition that I'm in because by that time I was really swollen like in the face and my body like you, you would think I'm a, a fat person but I was actually swollen you know um, the condition like if you look at the person the way that that I was um, you could tell that uh, you would I mean as a doctor you would want to literally like spend all your time just to figure out and to help this person um, but the doctor then left and it was okay. I remember looking into my parents' eyes when they were sitting next to the bed and they, like you could, t even if it's not what they said, but you could tell that they are in a way accepting that, okay, our child is dying, it's bad, you know. But um, the next doctor came and there was hope because he found then a specialist that we were referred to that we were supposed to go back um, on Monday morning. So Monday morning we came back to the hospital um, in hopes that, you know, finally we'll figure out what's happening with me. And then we got to the doctor's office and we were turned away by the doctor because um, it was around November. So most doctors close their offices and they don't take in new patients until the following year. So we were told to come back in January. Um, and to us, it was just like, hi, okay, back to square one. So we went back to the ER uh, in hopes that maybe we'll get another doctor. Um, but which, which really, I think it was a test of faith from us as a family, just to see what we would do, you know. We, we, I grew up in a very faith-based um, uh, family. So we prayed before we went to the ER, we prayed and, on our way there, everything just seemed to fall into place, you know. Um, we managed to get the right doctor and then I was admitted into hospital and I had to detox for like two days where they washed out all the medication that I've been taking over the period of, mm, you could say five months. So all your allergics, your panados, your whatever, they wanted to flush that out just in case whatever that was happening to me was hiding behind that. And then I went into surgery. I had a muscle biopsy where they extracted like a 
sample of my muscle for testing and stuff and together with many other tests that were ran um, throughout that week of me being uh, admitted at hospital and I was di then diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called dermatomyositis. It's a, it's a disease that affects the skin and the muscles. Um, it creates muscle weakness. So basically my muscles don't reproduce the way a normal person does. Um, and then that's, that's what causes the weakness in the body. Um, and then the skin as well, there's breakouts that you get. So uh, you, you are very, you could say you have very, very, like very sensitive skin and it comes with a whole lot of stuff as well. So uh, in the beginning of 2018, I then started off with the treatment that I was put on. So it's immunosuppressants. So it suppresses the immune system so that the immune system doesn't fight against itself because that's what basically causes the disease. Um, the disease is unfortunately uncurable. Um, so it's a, it's a lifetime thing, you know, and the cause as well is still being um, investigated. Like people, uh, the doctors are still trying to figure out what is the actual cause of this disease. Um, so I think the most, even though the physical part of me is um, getting better, like the outer part of it is getting better, but it's more of an internal uh, disease. You know, so having to live with it now is a challenge uh, on a daily. One day it's this, one day it's that. So uh, you just need to literally gain strength. Because sometimes you can wake up in the morning and feel like you don't want to get out of bed because you are in so much pain, you know. But then you, get, you gain strength just to move forward and do what you need to do. You push yourself to like with your all and you just go and do life because <laughs> it's it's literally you can go from being very clear in the skin and then one day you wake up and you are covered with blisters and painful blisters you know um just a few months ago actually i had um a breakout where my skin was it sort of felt like my skin was thinning so even the slightest touch of whatever maybe a face cloth or something I, my skin would tear and it would bleed and then again you have to um, look out for infections and stuff like that you know so living with an uncurable disease it's not an easy thing because it comes with you having to um, like explain to someone what you're going through um, when you go into public places because of the muscle weakness you need to be aware of your surroundings am i gonna have to walk long am i gonna have to climb upstairs am i gonna have to the chair that i'm gonna be sitting on is it too low is it too high you know um you're just constantly thinking of your surrounding areas, will I be able to do something? And it gets frustrating at times because you know that you are capable of doing it, but because of the condition that you are in, unfortunately you can't, you know. So basically my immune system is not fully functioning. Um, a normal immune system would fight bad cells in the body um, whereas my immune system fights itself, so the good cells, so the accumulation of the bad cells in the body, that's what causes um, me to be sick. And um, the medication that I'm on is to suppress the immune system from working completely so that it doesn't affect my body. So I take about 12 tablets a day just to survive. Um, but the tablets as well, they come with its own side effects um, they cause uh, the skin to be sensitive to the sun so i can't be in the sun like at all if unless if i'm under an umbrella or wearing a hat um, this the, the 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 pills also cause skin thinning so my skin automatically is like super thin hence it's sensitive and it causes cramps in the body it causes uh, my weight to fluctuate so i'm um, 
one minute I'm gaining a lot of weight and then one minute I'm losing a lot of weight. So then it's overnutrition and malnutrition. It's just a whole mixture of things. Um, uh, it causes my vision to be blurry. Sometimes I can't see. <laughs> um, yeah, it just causes a whole lot of things that you deal with on a daily. Um, but with God on my side and I think with prayer and the support that I get from everyone, be it friends, family, it, it really pushes a person to pull through every day and as well as the achievements that I personally want to achieve, you know. Um, it just gives me another a boost, you know, to say, yes, you can do it. Painful as it is, you know, scary as I can look from day to day, you know. But yeah, you a person pushes through and yeah, I think you eventually, I still believe that as much as they say it's an uncurable disease, but the faith that I have in God, I truly believe that one day I will be healed. With the whole breakouts on my skin, there's a lot of scars that I have to deal with on my body and having to love myself the way I am now. Um, and from being a girl who had perfect skin all her life, uh, even during puberty, I didn't have pimples, I didn't have, you know, and now having to deal with scars on my hands, on my back, on my thighs, you know, I can't wear shorts because there's just, it's not a pleasant image to look at, you know, um, but I have to deal with it and live with it because it's, I don't want to say it's the new me, but hey, it, it really is the new me. And having to explain to whoever I'm going to be <laughs> getting married to, you know, I think for them as well, it would be something that they would have to, it, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow for them as well to look, to accept and to love that, you know. But once I love myself the way I am, I think it will be easier for the next person to understand that just all the scars that I have on my body. Hi, my name is Neo and I've been through the most.